Blender, Blender 2.5 alpha version, not a complete release, but definitely a step in the right direction for Blender, which is good. Now a few things, I'm going to try and go off um, Super 3 Boys, new video about this, which talked about using, which is just to make a tutorial. This isn't a tutorial, this is sort of just a tour of the interface for people who have already used Blender, and try and show you a few things that I think are really useful and give you some tips on what you can do with some of these new features. Now, right off the bat, I think this looks a lot like a full 3D package like Maya, and the color scheme kind of reminds me of Moodoo, which is a smaller 3D modeling system, but I really think that it looks really it re looks really cool with this these colors, this gray, kind of, you know, contemporary, nice, very Ikea. <laughs> and so I made this little scene, just as a little hello world, for those of you who no programming lingo. It's a little just like get out there thing just to test it out. And it's just a, you just saw it in the intro. It's just a camera comes out under here. Spin. Camera comes out under here, spins around, boom. And I just sort of made this just to check it out. So let's look at a few of the things that are really cool in the new Blender. We have this new system over here sort of dongle thing, kind of like they have in motion, and you could probably get this in lots of 3D packages, but I never really saw this in Blender, maybe they had it, but I just didn't find it, and it works really well, you can select stuff, and it works really well, the gripe that I have with it is you cannot name the stuff, like this is so useful, this feature, and if you can't name it, it's useless, like if you have all these objects, like mesh 1, mesh 2, which is these two cubes and this, I mean, I know what they are, I can just, just flip through them, and I'll know what they are, just by seeing, but if I had a scene with maybe 15, 20 objects, I would not waste my time flipping through this thing. I could spend time naming them, being all like, oh, floor, cube 1, cube 2, that would save me a lot of time, especially if you, say, have one object inside another, and you just want to select it, you don't want to have to hit Z, go into wireframe, and select it. That would make your life easier, too. So, they kept most of the things the same. All the shortcut keys are still there. G to move stuff around. S to scale. You can still hit Z, go up and down. X like this. Y like this. Still very much the same. All those are still there. Gone is the space bar to add stuff. They added all this stuff, like full screen. And, let's get out of here. I don't like full screen. But they moved that all to add, mesh, all this stuff right there. Add a plane, add a cube, add a monkey. Where did my monkey go? So it, it, it's pretty cool what they did. And what used to be down here, all these buttons. I think they might have changed the order around. I think the, uh, the render one used to be like third. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that... This one at front, the front is much better. And they made it, so they're still all here, they're still there. They added a few things that I either never found in Blender because they weren't, it wasn't well laid out, or just because they weren't there. They still have this, all this stuff, the physics, fluid, colli collision objects. I think smoke is new, I don't, I'm not sure. I have a feeling that it's not, but I never saw it before or used it, but there's, there's now smoke, There's there are new things in pretty much all of these, which are very useful. They added this tool shelf thing over here, for just simple stuff, like smooth, stuff like that. Just simple stuff that you might want to do real fast, so you don't have to go into your modifiers, which will make your, probably make your work go a little faster. Another thing that I like is under renders you can go to shading and you can uncheck various things now this is something that i don't know i don't i'm pretty sure blender didn't have but this is something that's extremely useful for creating proxies for creating something to sort of represent your work like let's say you're working on a 
sort of, I don't know, maybe a, a CG thing to composite in After Effects, and you want to have something that you can composite, but you don't want to wait, say, your thing's 2,000 frames, and it's going to take you 10 hours to render. Let's say you don't want to do that, so you can turn off shadows. Probably not going to have shadows. Yeah, you can turn off shadows, turn off textures, environment map, you can really turn off. Pretty much turn off everything, except pretty much turn off all of these, just so you can see what your thing looks like, and it'll turn your rendering time down from maybe 10 hours to, I don't know, 20 minutes, probably, because of how well this works. And you can just turn all this stuff off. I'll show you right now. So if I render this now, it'll take about, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds to a minute. It's going pretty fast, but once it starts working on these shadows down there, it's takes a good amount of time. This is not really a good example, but this takes about, this took 18.6 seconds. So maybe I want to cut that down. There are no textures. Turn off shadows and ray tracing. This will speed this up a lot. And now, boom, there it is. It doesn't look as good, which is obvious. But I mean, you want to create a proxy. You want to show something to someone. And you can't afford a render cluster with four process, four quad cores in a blade. You can't afford that. This can save you some time. Just hit render like that. And this took 2.17 compared to 18. And then, so you can just pump out a, a quick, you know, proxy. And save yourself some time like that. So, that's pretty cool. These are some of the things that I really like in the new Blender. And it's just a really, really great new system. It's still alpha build, so there's still some things missing, like the viewpoints here. They added this nice sort of snap to in the middle. Superboy was having a little trouble showing that in his, because of the way his screen capture works, but I'll just show you right now. You click him, it sort of just flips over. It's kind of a, it's just sort of an intuitive thing that they kind of, it's kind of like Apple, how they, they do stuff like that just to show you, just to help you see where you're going, which is good. I think that definitely a little help, pretty helpful. It doesn't take up any more time, really. So, overall, I'm definitely liking the new Blender. Very, very nice. Very, very nice system. New look. And I like it. I think that as the beta comes out and then the full release, I'm definitely liking it. There are a few glitch, uh, glitches that I've noticed. One is where if you move this down, the mouse comes back up. So you see it comes down at the bottom and then pops up at the top which is sort of a glitch. I, I don't know if that's a glitch. I think it actually, you could call it useful that it does that, but I, I think it looks a little strange. Uh, it's sort of, it kind of reminds me of Star Fox on the Nintendo 64, where you'd go down the bottom and come back up the top. So, I mean, I guess you could call it useful. I'm not going to say that because it's a little annoying. But yeah, that's pretty much the new Blender. Thanks for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe. Don't favorite because this video wasn't that good. Nah, I'm just kidding. But rate, comment, and subscribe. Thank you, and goodbye.